Okay, so let's have a look at the Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Paper 1 for 2022, and this is question 6. So first question involves uh, differentiation from first principles. So we have this function here, 2x squared plus 4x, and we've just got to differentiate it from first principles. So let's start then. We've got f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 4x. First thing you do is do f of x plus h. So that's going to be, instead of x, put in x plus h. So it's x plus h squared plus 4 times x plus h. Now just multiply that out then. You've got 2 times x squared plus 2, uh, let's put the h first, h x plus h squared plus 4x plus 4h. So that's 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared plus 4x plus 4h. So the next thing we need to do is take our f of x plus h, subtract the f of x. You're going to take all of this here and you're going to subtract this here. So you can see that we have a 2x squared here and a 2x squared here. We have a 4x here and a 4x here, so they will give us 0 when we subtract. So 2x squared minus 2x squared will give us 0. 4x minus 4x will give us 0. So we just end up then with 4hx plus 2h squared plus 4h. That's what we end up when we subtract those two. Okay, so the next line then is uh, we've got to divide by h. Okay, so we've got to take f of x plus h, subtract the f of x, we've got to divide by h. So if we divide this by h, we'll get 4x plus 2h plus 4. So the h will disappear from here, the h will disappear from here, we'll get 1, in other words, h divided by h will give us 1, and h squared divided by h will give us h. So uh, next thing we've got to do then is just get the limit of both sides. So if we get the limit of the left hand side, well we just write it out, limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. This is our definition here of differentiation if you like. Uh, so h is going to 0. Well if h goes to 0 here we get 2 times 0 which is 0 and we're just left with 4x plus 4. So that's our answer, that's our differentiation from first principles. And you can check that by doing it the kind of quick way if you like, uh, and you do get 4x plus 4. Okay, so that's the first part of the question done. Second part then is where we have a rectangle and it's expanding in area. Its width is x centimeters, x is real and x is positive. Its length is always four times its width. So we have a rectangle. It's, whoops, well, you get the idea. This here is going to be x centimeters here, and this is going to be 4x centimeters along here. Its area then is 4x times x, which is 4x squared, and that's centimeters squared. Find the rate of change of its area find the rate of change of the area of the rectangle with respect to its width x. So in other words, um, if our area here, we'll call it, we'll just call it a for area, just to make it easier. So a here, we want dA, the rate of change of the area with respect to x. So really all we've got to do is differentiate this, and that just gives us 8x. So that's the rate of change of the area with respect to x. Now, it says find the rate of change of the area with respect to x when the area of the rectangle is 225, 225 centimeters. Now, if the area is equal to 4x squared, we've got to work out an x to put in here to work out the adx. So we know that the area has to be 225, so that's equal to 4x squared. Uh, you've just got to work out what the x would be when the area is 225. Uh, centimeters squared. So let's see, first thing we've got to do is divide by 4. So uh, x squared here will give us 225 divided by 4, which is 56.25. Uh, 
and then we've got a square root the left hand side as well and the right hand side of course and we get 7.5 7.5 so x will be 7.5 centimeters when the area is 225 centimeters squared so we want to find the rate of change of the area with respect to x when the area was 225 so or in other words when x is 7.5 so at x is equal to 7.5 centimeters da dx is equal to 8 times 7.5 which is 7 is 56 so you have now 60 uh, and that is that's the rate of change of the area with respect to the width so that's going to be units will be the area is going to be centimeters squared and the width is going to be centimeters okay so it's going to be centimeters squared per centimeter uh, okay, that's it really. So I don't think there's anything else we have to do there. Find the rate of change of the area of the rectangle with respect to its width, x, when the area of the rectangle is 225 centimeters squared. Okay, so we've done that. Okay, let's have a look at the next part then. We have the graph of a cubic function. P of x is shown in the first diagram below where x is between 0 and 4. So this is this one here, x is between 0 and 4. It's this cubic function here. Now the maximum value of P prime x, so this is prime x here, uh, P prime x. So the maximum value will be 1. So the maximum value is going to be up here somewhere. Now uh, P prime x at 0 is minus 3. So at 0 is going to be minus 3. So our first point will be down here at minus 3. Uh, where p prime x is the derivative of p of x. Use this information to draw the graph p prime x on the second set of axes below where x is between 0 and 4. Okay, so we're told uh, that first of all p prime of 0 is minus 3 so we're going to have a point here anyway we're told that the maximum value will be at 1 that's going to be along here somewhere now let's have a look at our graph up along here so we're going to differentiate this function so you can see down along here from here to here we're looking at negative slopes so in other words we're going to be on this side of the this side here of the uh, x-axis negative slopes now when it reaches here, you can see that the slope here, I've just missed it there, but the slope there is going to be, hard, the line, the tangent is going to be horizontal, so the slope will be zero. So we're going to end up with a zero slope here. So you're going to end up with a zero slope here. At the point of inflection as well, you should end up with your maximum. That's going to be here. The point of inflection looks like it's there. And we're saying that the maximum is at 1. That was We were told that in the question as well. The maximum point is going to be 1, so that's going to be there. Again, up here we've got a horizontal tangent, so the slope there is going to be uh, 0. So again, we're going to be down here uh, at a slope of 0. And then the rest of these here, these are going to be negative slopes again. Okay, so the tangents here are all going to have negative slopes. So we're going to end up down here somewhere if it's symmetrical, which it should be here. So it's a quadratic inverted quad parabola there. So we've got to just draw this. So we're going to come up along here. We're going to come around here. We're going to come down along here and down to here. Oops, a little bit of a wobble at the end there, but maybe you guys can draw it a little bit better than I can. But that's our, that's basically our graph. Uh, I think that's, again, all we had to do. So use this information to draw the graph p prime x this on the second axis below between 0 and 4, which we've done. Okay, that's it, and that's it for this question.